What's going on everybody? It's Carmine from Bar Mind Tech and today we're going to continue with the PFSense router series and we're going to turn our mini server that we've been working with into a router using PFSense Community Edition. So in the last video we talked about adding a new network interface to it and that was so we can install the PFSense Community Edition software and create a router with it. So if you haven't already added a second interface or if your server doesn't have one normally, go back to the last video and add a new interface and then you can come back to this one and you'll be able to set up your PFSense router on your little mini server or whatever you're running. So let's get started with it. So to start to better understand this in a little bit of a diagram way, this would be your server, whether you're running a mini server or you're running a full stack, you know, ATX tower, whatever it may be. Let's say for you have two interfaces or maybe you're running one of the little mini PCs and you only have one and you added on a USB adapter or you have a full stack PC and you're running four interfaces but you're going to be using two. This would be your router and these are the interfaces you're going to be working with. One would be your LAN for your internal traffic and one is going to be your WAN for your external traffic. So for me, I'm going to be running a 192.168.50 whatever. Uh, 192.168.1. whatever for my WAN, and my one my 50. whatever would be for my LAN and the internal traffic. So, draw a little note and just get a little diagram so you can look back. So you don't need to keep it all in your head in case you get yourself confused, whatever it is. But it's super simple. Just you need to know what addresses you're using and what addresses you assign to what bridges in Proxmox. So this would be the VMBR0 bridge, and this would be the VMBR1 bridge. This would be the new bridge we made in the last video, of course, depending on how your server is set up already. But we'll go from there. The next thing you're going to need is the PFSense Community Edition. So you can just Google PFSense Community Edition, and you can get the latest version. We're using AMD64, and then we're going to come down, we're going to get an ISO image, and I'm going to grab Austin, Texas, because it's closest to me. You would download it, it's going to give you as a archive file, you're going to use whatever archive program you want to use and extract it so you get the ISO. From there, you can go into your ISOs and upload it so you could use it as a, into a virtual machine. So now it's time to actually make the virtual machine and it's super simple. So we're going to come over to create VM, we're going to call it PFSense test. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to go on to the next. I'm going to select the drive where my ISO images are. I'm going to select PFSense. I'm going to leave everything else default. I'm going to leave all these options default. The disk you can select wherever you want to store. So I'm going to select the local v LVM. And I'm just going to give it the default space. It's only a router, so it doesn't need a ton of space. I'm going to give it one core. And I'm going to give it two gigs of RAM. Now for the network, I'm just going to leave it how it is. And I'm going to use the FERT IO power virtualized power virtualized go with that uh, we're going to be adding to this so you could either select no network device or you can go from there but I, I just did it this way and it worked I'm going to click next and I'm not going to start it so I'm not going to have this checked off but everything looks good and we're going to click finish so now the new machine is coming up and we're going to go into hardware and we need to add the external interface so for me I'm going to come back over here. This is my internal range and this is my external range. Realistically, these are both internal ranges. I run a dual router setup in my house, not by choice. It's how my ISP has me run it. But for simulation and to show you how this, this lab would be, this would be my internal range, this would be my external range. So this for you might be a 47 address, it might be a 10 address or a 92 or whatever your ISP leases you. For me, I'm using two internal ranges because I don't have a public address to play with like that. But just remember, take note of which one is your internal address and which one is your external address. So now we come back over to the machine we're working with. We need to add another network device. So I'm going to click Add, Network Device, and I'm going to add VMBR1. So this is the second bridge. This would be my external address. So I have VMBR0 and VRBM1. Now take note of net zero and net one because it's going to ask you this during the installer. So net zero is your internal, net one is your external. Again, depends on how you have your Proxmox service set up. You're going to have to pay a little attention in the last video and this video and have an idea of how your hardware is set up. After you do this, it's all set to get started. So we're going to start the machine up. 
and now we can start the installer. So you can see down here in the console, it's starting. We can see it turned on, so now I'm going to open it up. And you can see PFSense is running. We're going to give this a minute to boot, and when it's all set, we'll be right back. So now the installer is booting up, and we get to the license agreement, so we're going to accept it. And we want to install PFSense. And we're going to pretty much leave everything as the default setting. So we're going to leave default key map. We're going to use auto ZFS. We're going to install. I want to stripe it because I'm not running multiple disks. Uh, you do need to select the disk. You're going to use the space bar to select it. And then you can click enter. And then this is your last chance to, if you know, if there's anything on the disk, it's going to write over it. So I'm just going to click yes again. And it's installing. It's a quick install, I have to say. It's probably one of the fastest virtual machines you'll start up. So, again, we'll give this another minute. We'll be back when it's all done. So, about a minute later, it'll be all done. And it's going to tell you that the installer is all done. And it's going to ask if you'd like to open a shell. I don't. We're going to just process it through so it reboots. And then we can put shell in. So, we're going to click no. We're going to click reboot. And again, the machine's going to reboot. It's a quick restart. It's a very, it seems to be a very light software. I don't have a lot of experience with PSNs, but I know it's the software to use. We'll give this a second to reboot. So like I said, I don't have a lot of experience with it, so we're both learning at the same time. But it seems to be a very uh, simple software to set up. I just booted one up before this to give it a quick test, and it's very straightforward. So going through the restart process, it's going to ask you, should VLANs be set up now? I don't want to set VLANs up right now, so we're like, no. And now this is going to come back to which one was net zero and net one. So it's going to ask you the WAN interface. So for me, it's VNet1. And you can come back over here in your Proxmox, and you can see Net1 and Net0. So if you remember which bridge was which, you can do this. So Net1 is my WAN. And then we're going to do VNet0 is my internal. See, I actually messed it up, and we're going to fix this. So it's enter the WAN interface. So you can either do A or auto detection, but we're not going to do it. So we're going to do VT. I typed it wrong. VT net 1. And then for the LAN, it's the same thing. VT net 0. And that's because that's my internal. I'm going to click enter. And then you get a chance to double check. And that's true. So I'm going to click yes. And now it's going to sit there, and it's going to process some of the settings. So we'll give it another minute, and when it's all done, we'll be right back. So now it's configured its settings and we're almost ready. And if you take a look, it's showing you your interfaces and the addresses for them. So for your WAN, it's going to be following the network scheme for the interface. So I run a slash 24 on my external. So it's pulling the right address. But PFSense defaults is 192.168.1.1 network. So we need to change that. So here's all the options. We're going to assign interfaces to work like two, hit enter. And we're going to change the LAN. So we're going to click 2 again. And we're going to reconfigure an address. So here's where you have to kind of be familiar with your network. Because you're going to be assigning an address to this interface. So make sure you don't double up on an address that's already leased out. So either look at your network map and see what is already assigned. or And also make sure that you don't have any DHCP leases out already. Because you don't want to double up this address. So for me, I'm going to use 192.168.50. I'm going to give it 286 because I don't think I have an address with that. So we click enter. So I'm just going to guess that something might be using 286 that I don't realize. So we're going to try something else. So I'm going to give it 74. There you go. So I must have a machine that's already using 286. So I gave it 74 and that worked. So see, that's how I say you got to be aware of what's going on. I should have looked at what's leased out already. Now you need to enter how many bits you need for your subnet mask. It gives you a little chart. It's asking for your site or notation. So if you run a slash 24, you give it a 24 bits. So I run a slash 24, so we're going to give it that. So we're all done. I'm not going to enter anything. You don't need to enter anything for the gateway for the LAN. So we're just going to click enter. I'm not using IPv6. And right now I don't want to enable DHCP. So I'm going to click no again. I don't want to revert to HTTP, and we're all done, so now it's reloading, and you can see there's the address that I just assigned the interface, so we click enter, and here we are with the new address. So from here, if I can take this address, and we can actually open up the PFSense webpage, so we're going to do that right now. 
So we're loading into the web page and most of your browsers are going to detect this as a security threat so you can just click advanced and you can accept the risk. It's a local address and you just assigned it so you should be okay with it. I'm going to give it a second and then the pfSense web portal is going to load up. Here is a perfect example of why to check your network map. So it took dot .74 but it turns out that dot .74 is my smart manager switch so i'm gonna have to go back and fix this and we'll come back when it's all done okay so i went through and i reassigned it really quick and uh, I, I keep saying it but this is why you want to check to make sure you're not assigning an address that's already leased out i don't remember all the addresses for all the other uh, appliances on my network and i should have looked at what's leased out already but it's all done with so when you get to this web page the default credentials are admin and then the password's PF sense one word. I'm gonna click no, and it's gonna welcome us. And it's just giving us the little setup wizard. So I'm gonna click next, next. We're gonna give it a host name. I'm just gonna leave it PF sense. You can change your domain. I'm gonna leave it. You're gonna set your default DNS servers. So I'm gonna use 1.1.1, and I guess we'll use 8.8.8 .8 as a backup. I'm gonna leave this checked off because it's default. The time server, so this is for your NTP, so I'm going to leave this default, and then you can set your time zone, so I believe I'm GMT minus 4, I think that's EST, I hope so, we're going to click next, and here you can do your WAN sentence, so we're going to leave WAN as DHCP, so typically you probably are in a situation that your ISP leases you your external IP address, but you don't notice it, so typically your ISP leases you your external address for quite some time until you change your modem or your, your router, whatever reaches out externally and when it detects the new MAC address is when it assigns you a new address. Again, it's random by all the ISPs. You might have a really long lease or you might have a really short lease and you get a new address every week. It's something you just gotta keep track on, but by having DHCP, it's always going to keep pulling that external address. Other than that, I'm going to leave all this default. I'm going to click next. It's going to ask you for your internal range again. I'm going to leave this as because we already just did this. Click next again, and now you can change your password. So this is for the admin account. So you're going to change it from PFSense to whatever you'd like. I'm going to click next again, and now it's going to reload the router. So now you have a PFSense router running, and you're almost all set. So we're going to click finish, and we should be running the latest version because we just downloaded the, the latest ISO. So we're going to click finish, and we'll give it a second to load, and here we are. So now it's going to give us the warning again. We're going to accept it, and tell us thank you. We're going to close it out, and here we are at our router dashboard so now we have our own virtual router running off of our proxmox machine with pfsense you can see we're on the latest version so we don't need to update it as of yet you can see over here we have our uh our interfaces for our wan i'm running 10g base t and for both of them they both have the proper addresses you can see use dhcp to pull the address it's given us our hardware specs our disk usage and we have all these other options so right here now we have PS sensor router running and in the next videos we're going to go over some more stuff like configuring the firewall the VPN and other stuff throughout of it but here we are that we have our router running so it might seem like a really daunting task to try to set up your own router but we, it's not you could see we did probably in about 10 minutes and it could have been even shorter if you just if I checked my D, which uh, DHCP we released out. We have PFSense all set up, so from here we're gonna keep working with it. We're gonna have some more videos of all the different services and features that PFSense hosts, and we're gonna build our own virtual router using Proxmox and PFSense off of a mini server. So in my case, I bought my mini server for 50 bucks. You could probably get one even cheaper, or if you have an old PC laying around, you can make it into a router. So now you can turn in the old router that your ISP rents you and have one for free based off your server or whatever else. So be sure to stick around and subscribe because we're going to keep adding to this series and have more videos building off of this. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.